Good morning, guys. It's Pastor Chris at True Life Way. I hope you've had a great weekend. If you don't know what today is, I feel sorry for you if you don't know what today is. Today is Resurrection Sunday, otherwise known as Easter Sunday. We are preaching a message this morning called Love Resurrected. I can't wait. I'm excited for it. <clears throat> Excuse me, you're going, to to, you're going to have to bear with me. <clears throat> My throat's not quite as sore as it was, but I'm still a little under the weather. I'm not completely better yet. I almost, I told Whitney this morning, I woke up, and it was probably about 9, 9 o'clock, 9.30ish, I started practicing. I was trying to sing, and I was coughing real bad, and I was like, you know what, I'm just not going to do it. And I told Whitney, I said, you know what, I guarantee you the devil's wanting me to say, you know, I'm just going to postpone tonight, to the, uh, this morning's service for later, or maybe whenever, but... But that's not what I'm going to do. I'm not postponing the service. Obviously, we're here. We're going to go live. If I cough, if I sneeze, you know, whatever, we're going to do this. But I just went through again. You know, at the last minute, I decided to actually try to practice this song again. And I told Whitney it was a successful run. See, today we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen? We celebrate the day Jesus rose from the grave. You go to that grave today, that's an empty tomb. There's not going to be, a, uh, Jesus' body's not going to be laying in that tomb today. He rose again. And so I'm getting ready to try to sing this song. If I'm sorry if I start coughing in the middle of it. We may stop and restart it. I don't know, but we'll see how it happens. We're praying that God will get me through this. I know he will. But we're going to be singing Rise Again, normally sung by Dallas Holmes. And this song is just saying, you know, you can mock me, tear me down, throw me in a grave, but I'm going to rise again. How many of y'all believe that today? How many of y'all believe that today, that he is a living God? Do you believe that today? Amen. Carson, do you believe that today, that he is the living God? Amen. Let me go to try to sing this song for you guys. I will rise again. thank you today, God, for what you do, Jesus. We love you, God. We thank you for your ultimate sacrifice. We thank you for rising again on the third day. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
This cross here says, Jesus, Jesus is Lord. And he rose again. Amen. Let me turn this down. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for getting me through that song. There was no struggle with it at all. And we know that that's how he works. Amen. He will help us through it. He will see us through it. I kind of want to sing another song, but I'm not, I'm not sure about all that. Step out on faith. Step out on faith, he says. Uh, Chris, do me a favor and uh, open up that briefcase over there. We'll try another song. We will try one more song. Just this the day we're talking about love resurrected. How I many of y'all know that it is his love that defends us? Bring me that, uh, yes, that notebook. His love defends us. I'm sorry I feel like I'm unprepared, but I wasn't going to sing this. Well, God lays down your heart. But I feel like we need to sing this song today. Let me just grab these lyrics so I don't stumble over them. And if I do stumble, oh well. But tonight, not tonight, I'm so used to going live at nighttime. This morning. But this morning, <laughs> we're going to sing Your Love Defends Us. Because, you know, love resurrected. Amen? Amen. Amen, Christopher? Amen. Amen. You are my joy, you are my song, you are the well, the one I'm drawing from. You are my refuge, my whole life long, where else would I go? Surely my God is strength of my soul. Your love defends me, your love defends me, and when I feel like I'm all alone, your love defends me, your love defends me, yeah. His love defends us. Day after day, I will remember you're with me in this fight. Although the battle it rages on, the war's already won. I know the war is already won. Surely my God is strength of my soul. Your love defends me, your love defends me, and when I feel like I'm all alone, your love defends me, your love defends me, we sing high. Your love defends, your love defends me, and when I feel like I'm all alone, your love defends me, your love defends me, surely my God is strength of my soul, your love defends me, your love defends me. Your love defends me, your love defends me, 
something today right now. Ooh. I feel like I'm about to be crazy, but I kind of want to do a, a third song, and this will be the last song we do. Whitney, what do you think? Go for it. Step out on faith and sing it. We're going to do it. You know, if I mess up, I mess up. I think I know what you're going to sing. I don't know. Yeah. Whitney says she thinks she knows what I'm going to sing. But I don't know how many is out there watching. Can you hear me okay? I want to tell you I love you guys so much. I appreciate the support. <coughs> you know, you, even when you watch me when I'm not feeling well, when I'm uh, make trying to do my best, the best I can to make it through these songs, but sing I can only imagine. I can't sing I can only imagine right now, but I can yeah. sing all my hope.
Jesus tonight. He is my hope. And I hope he's your hope. If you don't know who Jesus is, I hope by the end of this, you'll have a good understanding of Jesus. And you'll, uh, you'll know who he is. If you don't know who he is, I hope you have a desire to want to know him. And those of you that do know him, I hope you have a desire to want to know him more. <coughs> Excuse me. We are talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one that come down from heaven as a man. The king. Think about that. What kind of king comes down to an earth and wants to die for his people? Think about that for a moment. The king that come down. And not just any king. Not just some king over here in this country or whatever, this province. We're talking about the king of kings. The one that's above all. Amen? Amen. The king of kings and the Lord of Lords. He come down to die on the cross. For us. Amen. Amen. Tonight, I mean, today we're getting ready to talk about love resurrected. Love resurrected. We got a couple of scriptures to read. Now, well, I'm just going to tell you right now that uh, we're not going to be reading the whole story here. I do encourage you to go through there and read. This is going to, our scriptures coming from Luke 24 today. King James Version. And like I said, I encourage you, if you want to read the entire thing in, in, uh, in, its, in its entirety, it's in Luke 24. But we're going to go through, I'm going to hit some of the key points that I want to hit about love. And when you're reading, when I'm going through this, you'll be like, well, that don't have to say anything about love resurrected. But Jesus Christ, today, if you don't know that Jesus is love, I hope you know that today, that Jesus Christ is love. What did Jesus Christ do? I don't want to get ahead of my scripture, my, my notes here, but what did Jesus Christ do while he was walking the earth? He was healing the blind, opening blinded eyes, causing the lame to get up and walk, rising, raising people up from the dead. He was done this out of love. Love, his strangers. All these people that come up, they were strangers, and he loved them. He showed them love. He didn't turn them away because of the way they looked, the way they smelled, the way they worshipped. They didn't, he didn't turn them away for that. Amen? He loved them. So when Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again, love resurrected. Amen? Amen. Let me not get ahead of myself. Let's go ahead and start with some scripture. Oh, 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 I'm getting way ahead of myself. How many people's watching right now, Whitney? Probably not many. I know people's in their own church services. Me? Whitney's watching. We'll take a prayer request in here. If you have a prayer request later on, if you catch this a little bit later, if you want to type something in, we'll... I mean, sometimes I may not see it. I'll just be honest with you. But you can always text my phone number and, and give us prayer requests directly. And that's probably the best way to get it for us to see it so we can be praying for you. But in this room right here, does anybody have any prayer requests? I have a prayer request. Y'all keep praying for me that I will recover. I'm, my throat, Like I said, my throat's not hurting near as bad as it was. Uh, I was able to say thank God for him getting me through this. Amen. I appreciate you, Lord, for that. Because, like I said, originally I wasn't going to sing anything. I got up and I was practicing at 9.30. And I was like, well, this ain't working. This just ain't working. But Lord says, you're going to sing tonight. You're going to sing. Amen. So I, I sang. Okay. Chris, do you have a prayer request? Yes. Okay, so my prayer request is that people that don't know God or know God, um, will be on the further understand or learn to know God. Pray with Christmas says, he echoes what I said. He wants people that, if they don't know God, that after this sermon, that they will know him. And those that don't know him, that do know him, will want to know him more. Uh, I just, I, I really hope that people under the sound of my voice will hear this message. If you didn't catch the first two sermons, that's fine. But this one, for me, is the most important. Because suppose Jesus had died on the cross. If Jesus had died on the cross and he was put in that tomb, and suppose he never resurrected, he never rose, rose from the dead, there would be a no atonement for sin. 
it would have to be us to pay for our sins. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. So I hope people understand my voice, that you will know, and that you understand that this Jesus that you've heard of, he's your friend. He loves you. You are a child of God. Amen. And he loves you enough so that he died on the cross for you. He died on the cross for you. He died on the cross for me and my children and my wife, my cousin. He died for all of us. And I want you to know that tonight. If you're watching this later and you don't, you just know of Jesus, I hope you'll know that he died and he loves you. And he died just for you. Amen. You were someone worth dying for. Unspoken. All right, we have a special unspoken prayer request. And, you know, the Lord sees the needs. He knows our needs before we even know we have need of them. Amen. <coughs> and we trust in him that he will get us through our needs and that he will provide our needs. You know, not he's not necessarily going to provide our wants. If it's not what he wants us to have, he knows what's best for us. Amen. So we pray for his will to be done today. Amen. We pray for anybody that has sickness in their body that it flees in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, any other prayer requests, Whitney? Um, let's, see. Well, let's go ahead and take these needs before the Lord today. Lord, we thank you for this day that you give us, God. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings, God. We thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for our sins and rising up on that third day, Lord. And we thank you, that Lord, for you being the true King of kings and Lord of lords, that you came forth as a lamb, slaughtered and slain, and then, but when you come back, that you're coming back as a lion and with a vengeance and that you're going to take us home. And we declare that, Lord, and we thank you for that. Lord, I ask that, that you will touch my body, God, and heal this sickness from me. But I declare it in the name of Jesus, God. I ask that you be with anybody, any special and spoken prayer request out there. Anyone under the sound of my voice, God, whatever the healing, touching, deliverance, whatever it may be that they need, God, I ask that you touch them, heal them, cleanse them. And in the name of Jesus, we declare that. Right now, God, in the name of Jesus, any any sickness has to go. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, we claim that in your name. Lord, I ask that you let tonight, I mean, today be a seed planted in someone's life today, God, that they don't know who you are, that they will know you after this sermon. And if they, if they do know you, Lord, that they will want to know you more after this sermon. And I thank you, and I give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen. 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 Let me move this so I don't get confused. That's not part of my notes here. But your love does defend us. And we thank you for that, Lord. Love resurrected. Luke 24, King James Version. Starting at verse 1. And it's going to go through verse 7 for right now. I think Whitney may have already posted all the scripture. I'm not sure. I see a whole bunch of stuff over there. Yeah. All of 24. Alright, so she posted all of 24 so you can refer to that. If you want to read the entire thing. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. Verse 3, and, then, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. So they walked in and they couldn't find Jesus. His body was no longer there. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? <coughs> Why seek ye the living among the dead? Living's got no reason to be around the dead, amen? He is not here, but he he is risen. Remember how he spoke unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Today this is the final sermon series in our the cross sermon series for Resurrection Sunday. Love resurrected. You know, last Sunday we talked about the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. We talked about Jesus dying on the cross. How that was the greatest display of love ever known to man. Ever known to man. Because he died for every single one of us. Every single one of us. And I, I'm going to tell you right now, if you think that it was the nails that held Jesus to that cross, you're sadly mistaken. Because he was held to that cross, not by nails, not by thorns, 
<laughs> but it was love that held Jesus to the cross. Amen? Amen. Love. You see, that when I was doing this sermon, I was kind of torn in between the scripture reading. Because in the Matthew version, it tells us that there was a huge earthquake. And then that there was an angel descending from heaven. And the Luke version doesn't give you that bit of information. But regardless, I'm thankful he rose again. Whether there was an earthquake, no earthquake, don't matter. Jesus rose again. Amen? But the scripture tells us that they had prepared that. Early in the morning, they had come to the grave with spices that they had prepared. This is the women. Now, when they had arrived, they noticed a stone was rolled away from the door. They went inside and could not find the body of Jesus. Could you imagine that, walking in there, knowing Jesus had been laid in a tomb, you know, wrapped up in the linen, but there's, there's no Jesus. Where's Jesus at? Where's his body? They could not find the body of Jesus Christ. The word perplexed was used. They were puzzled about where the body of Jesus was. Couldn't imagine that. You walk in thinking you're going to see Jesus, and all of a sudden you can't find him. I'm puzzled. Where is his body? Where did he go? Amen. Scripture tells us that two men stand beside them in shining clothes. Matthew, it says, Matthew 28, verse 2. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came back and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. <coughs> his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. So I, I kind of like that little detail in there. When they noticed the men, they were afraid. I like the response by the angels. You know, the women, they see the, 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 the he said the angels, they were afraid of them. He says, why? Do ye seek the living among the dead? Why? They, they said, remember what he said? He told you all that he would be delivered to, uh, and given, or given to sinful men, and he would have to be put to death. But, on, and, but in three days, that he would rise again. And then it says they remembered his words. They remembered Jesus saying that. Luke 24, verses 9 through 12. And returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest that were there. Verse 10, it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women that were with them was told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales and they believed them not. But then arose Peter. And see, there's something special about Peter we're about to talk about. And he ran into the sepulcher. And stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. So you got these, they went back and they told the others what they had just seen, what they had just witnessed. The disciples didn't want to hear it. They, they, the words that they spoke to, to them seemed to be like idle, idle tales or like fairy tales. It wasn't true. And so they didn't believe. <coughs> I'm sorry. They had a hard time believing that they, that they, uh, what they were saying, that there was some angel at the tomb and saying that he's not here. But for Peter, it was like a light bulb had flicked on in Peter. He had to see the empty tomb for himself. So you have to remember what Peter had done. Before Jesus was arrested, killed, and buried, he was told that he would deny Jesus three times. And it was so. That's what happened. However, there's an important thing to note here, that when Jesus was arrested... <clears throat> Carson, you listening over there? When Jesus was arrested, all the other disciples ran away. They ran away. Peter may have denied him. Peter may have put some distance in between him and Jesus, but he stuck around. He stuck around for it all. And Peter makes it to the grave and stoops down, seeing the linen folded. He began to wonder what had happened. That's what the scripture says. He began to wonder what had happened to the body of Jesus Christ. We're going to continue with verses 13 through 17. And it says, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score four furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. So, you know, they're talking about what had happened, just happened with Jesus being crucified and then buried in the tomb and all that. And it come to pass while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself, it says, verse 15, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. So they didn't recognize him. 
And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have to one another, as ye walk and are sad? So these two, they didn't even recognize Jesus when he, walked, when he was there walking with them. Jesus is talking, he's like, Why are you sad? Cleopas asked, Are you like the only one in Jerusalem that has no idea what has happened the past couple of days? He then begins to tell Jesus the story about Jesus of Nazareth. Hear how he was a prophet, powerful in word and in deed, before God and all people. You know, he's telling Jesus this. He's telling Jesus, let me tell you about this man, his name was Jesus. We call him Jesus of Nazareth. He's telling Jesus, Cleopas was. The women, <clears throat> the women that we were with went to the tomb early in the morning and said his body was nowhere to be found and that they seen angels telling them, he is alive. Somebody say that right now, that he is alive. He is alive. Amen. Alive. And I know if it was me, but can you imagine that? If like if it was me, and like if you were, I, if I was Jesus, and I see these people walking, I just happen to walk up, casually talk, start talking to them, and, that, and, I'll, and they're telling me this story about this person, I'm like, that's me you're talking about. I'd be like, well, hold up, wait a minute. You guys are talking about me, but see, that's not how Jesus did it. See, you know, I guess in today's world, I mean, if you, if, uh, what's, the, what's the term called? Uh, being savage, I guess you could say. Jesus was pretty savage in verse 25, and I like the way his response was. He says, Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Jesus wasn't playing around, was he? Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? How slow are you to believe what all the prophets have spoken? This is what Jesus is telling them. Did not the Messiah have to go through these things and then enter in his glory? He then begins to tell them scripture, the Bible. The Bible states that he started with Moses and he explained to them all that was in scripture concerning himself, which was Jesus. As they approached the village, they were headed. Jesus was going to keep going. But they said, no, just stay with us right now. You know, the day was almost over, night was almost upon them, and it says Jesus stayed with them. Verse 30. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it, break it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, the scripture says, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. See, it took something that they had recognized and noticed him doing before, breaking the bread and passing it around, that their eyes were open like this is Jesus Christ. All of a sudden, they recognized and knew who he was, but he vanished out of their sight. Verse 32. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened up to us the scripture? So they're talking about, Did our heart not burn within us when he was talking to us about all the scriptures? Showing us all, telling us, starting with Moses and telling us all that was concerning him. 30, verse 33. And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven gathered together, and, and them that were with them. And I'm getting ready to close with this. Verse 34 saying, The Lord is risen indeed. Before we continue, I want somebody to tell me this tonight. Repeat after me. The Lord, the Lord is risen, is risen indeed. indeed. And hath appeared unto Simon. You don't say that. Verse 34 saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. You see, Jesus had conquered death, hell, and the grave. He was and he is alive forevermore. As I told you, this was kind of like a summary of the story. If you want to read the entire story, I, I, I highly recommend you. It's a great read. But how does all that get to love resurrected? I'm about to go through a whole list of stuff of how love resurrected. Love resurrected. You know, as I've mentioned before, before I go on any further, it wasn't about the cross. You know, many people had died on the cross. They were crucified on crosses. So what made it special with Jesus is because of who was placed upon that cross. The name given by, among men by which we must be saved. The only name. Jesus. Like I said before, if I was placed on a cross, crucified, maybe I had nails and thorn, thorns in my head and hands, nails in my hands and my feet. 
I would have been buried in the tomb too. But I can tell you one thing, I'd still be laying there. Amen? Chris Barnett, can't, he couldn't die for everyone's sin. I couldn't pay the atonement for sin. I couldn't. It was all about Jesus. Oh yeah, I remember this, Christopher. I don't know if y'all going to be able to see this on the camera or not. This was something I made out of craft sticks for Christopher. And it says, Jesus is love. Jesus is love. Amen. Here, you can have that back. Yeah, you can see it. You can see it? Good. Jesus is love. Go ahead and say that one time. Jesus is love. Jesus is love. Because Jesus is love. The Lord is risen indeed. The Lord is risen. Love is has resurrected. It was love that allowed Jesus to endure the beating and the mocking. Think about that. While he's getting mocked, beat, spit on, slapped, it was because of love that he went through it. Amen? It was love that allowed Jesus to endure the crown of thorns placed upon his head. Can you imagine that, having a crown of thorns placed? And I'm sure these weren't little tiny thorns either. I'm sure they were pretty good sized thorns. And I think back to the pain that I felt when I had that piece of plastic slamming my head and the blood was running down my face. I'm sure that was nothing compared to what Jesus went through. It was love that allowed Jesus to carry that cross up the hill of Calvary. Have you ever thought about that? Several years ago, and I think I've mentioned this before. <coughs> Excuse me. But I had built a cross out of two-by-fours in the backyard. Whitney probably remembers. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I'm so sorry. I remember building this cross in the backyard, two by fours, and then placing it upon my shoulders to carry it all the way around to the front to where I was going to put it in the ground. I forget how tall the cross stood. I think it, it ended up standing about 12 foot tall with about three and a half, four foot actually buried in the ground. I had no concrete around it or nothing. But I remember carrying that cross from the backyard around to the front. I couldn't help but think about Jesus as he was carrying his cross up the hill of Calvary. I can imagine his cross would have been 20 times heavier than the one I was carrying. The cross I built would not have held the weight of a man. It would not have. So I can only imagine how heavy the cross was when Jesus carried it up the hill of Calvary. I was thinking, wow, this cross, I mean, it's kind of heavy. It's hurting my back a little bit. But I couldn't imagine the cross Jesus had to carry. And it was, he carried it out of love. As I've said before, he didn't stop halfway up the hill. He went the whole way. <coughs> I'm sorry, i got to put a cough drop in. <coughs> Excuse me. It was love that Jesus did not call down 10,000 angels. You know, while he's strapped to the cross anytime he could have snapped his finger called down some an, an army of angels to come down and pull him from that cross with a snap of a finger blink of an eye <coughs> but it was love that Jesus went through it amen it was love that Jesus asked his father to forgive them some of us forget about that he says forgive them for they know not what they do you know, Jesus is up there on the cross, bloody, beaten, bruised, wounded, nails in his hands and in his feet, crown of thorns on his head, but he still says, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. After he went through, he's going through all this pain and suffering for us, the ones that were killing him, Father, forgive them. Chris, we get that dog away from the tripod. It was love that he gave up the ghost for us. You know, he died for us. It was love that rose. Love that resurrected. He loves you today. Some of y'all don't believe that today. Some of y'all believe that y'all believe in Jesus, but we don't know Jesus. Does that make sense? Chris, does that make sense to you? We believe in Jesus, but we don't necessarily know who Jesus is. You know, we might believe that somebody named Jesus rose again, but we, do we know he rose again? So I've said this before, there's a difference in belief 
When you believe in something, there leaves that percentage, that small little percentage of doubt. You know, I believe in a million dollars. Okay? But I don't know there's a million dollars because I've never seen it. Amen? I believe in Jesus Christ. But I know Jesus Christ because I felt him. I can feel him in my life. I can feel him moving. I can, feel, I can see things change. I can see things happen. Healings come out from nowhere. No, it comes from somewhere. It comes from Jesus Christ. Amen? But we have to get that mindset that I don't just believe. I know. Amen? I know. Do you know that the God we serve is the one living God? The true one living God? You go to that grave. It's empty. And you know why? Because love resurrected. Love resurrected that day. That's the reason we celebrate this day. We call it Easter Sunday. I'm calling it Resurrection Sunday. Because that's the day Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Amen? Amen. Easter's all fine and dandy. But we associate Easter with Easter bunnies and eggs. It's not about the Easter bunny today. It's about the lamb. Amen? The lamb that come down to earth and was slain. Amen? That's why we celebrate it. These egg hunts are fine and dandy. That's all fun. You might get your face painted. Amen? Okay, good. Good for you. But it's about Jesus Christ today. That is the reason we celebrate this day. Amen? Love resurrected. You know, Jesus was all about love. This is why I didn't want to get ahead of myself. Opening blinded eyes. Causing the lame to leap. The dead to live again. <coughs> Healing complete strangers because he was an example of how we should live. He was the example. He is the example of how we are supposed to live. Jesus didn't go around pushing people away. Hating on somebody because they, they didn't look this way. They didn't dress that way. They didn't talk this way. They didn't, whatever. Jesus is love. Say that with me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is, love. is love. Carson, I didn't hear you. Jesus, Jesus is love. Is love. <coughs> Jesus was and should always be our example today for how we live. Because he is love. Amen. I'm going to end with one, one final last scripture. John 15, verse 13. King James Version. And I think we may have ended with this scripture last Sunday as well. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Amen. He died on the cross for our sins. On the third day, love resurrected. Amen. Love resurrected. Love resurrected. We're going to dismiss in prayer, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Normally, I would like to play an altar call song or something. But here lately, Facebook has been giving me a lot of grief about it. And it's been like trying to jump through hoops, trying to keep videos on Facebook. So instead of having a song play at the end, we're just going to dismiss in prayer. And then I'll, if there's announcements, I'll go over them. That's going to be starting today and from here on out till we get a building. When we get a building, we'll just go live after the singing is done, and I don't have to worry about it. But I, uh, I hope you get something out of this. For those of you that are watching now, those of you that will watch later, whenever you may watch, I hope you know that, that love resurrected and Jesus died for you. I'm pointing at you. If you're watching this, he died for you. If you're watching this, you were someone worth dying for. Amen? You were worth dying for. I was worth dying for. Amen? So let's dismiss in prayer. Lord, we love you today, God. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Lord, I ask that if there's anybody under the sound of my voice at this hour, God, that don't know you, Lord, that you show them, Lord, today who you are. Show them your love, God. For those that may have turned and walked away, God, bring them back home. Tell them it's time for them to come back to where they belong. In the name of Jesus, tell them that today, God. That it's time to get back on the right path because you're soon to be coming back. 
in this time that we make ourselves ready. And it's out of love that you're going to come back and take us home to be with you forever in paradise. And we're looking forward to that. And we thank you for that. But God, I ask that you let this, this seed be planted in someone's life today, God. That it grows and it matures and it nurtures. And Lord, I just ask that it will strengthen the person that's watching this video, God. I ask that, that it will cause them to grow into a stronger Christian, Lord. Lord, whatever it, it takes, God, I ask that you just be with it, God, and that you bless it. And we love you and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And in Jesus' name we pray. And the church say amen. 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 As I said, I hope you get something out of this message today, but I want you to know that Jesus is love. He died for you. He died for me. And this is the final series in our the Cross Sermon series for Resurrection Sunday. It's kind of sad, actually. But this is the one I've been looking most forward to. And it seemed like it was going to be, that it wasn't going to be that great because all of a sudden I'm sick. And, you know, I had to cancel last Thursday the sermon because my throat was hurting so bad. Uh, then I had to cancel the nursing home thing yesterday. But that's just the way things are. And God, he, he got me through this today. And I'm very thankful for that. So with that being said, we love you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can call me, text my number. You can email us at truelifeway at hotmail.com. <clears throat> I mean, I get notifications from my phone from that. Uh, is there anything else I need to say? Uh, Christmas says Jesus is love. He showed the cross. Jesus is love. Let me say that one more time when I show them one more time. Last time. No, Y'all don't pay attention to the super glue on it. I mean, the uh, Jesus is love. Amen. Jesus is love. And no matter how much I love you, there's no way I could love you as much as Jesus does. Because I'm not willing to die for you. Amen. <laughs> I'm just saying. And even if I did, I could not take away your sins. My blood will not wash away sins. Only the blood of Jesus Christ did. And so that being said, we love you guys. We hope to see you uh, Thursday night at the same time, 7 p.m. I don't think there's anything going on Thursday, right? I don't think so. So I'll go in the plan. We should be able to see. We'll, we will be going live Thursday night. 7 p.m. normal time. So we love you guys. Thanks for watching and God bless you. And have a happy uh, Resurrection Sunday.